even when it was dangerous, he stayed with his people, with his flock, and he gave his life for that. He is the example. The very first Mary Knoll Seminarian not only set missionary precedent, but ignited the Catholic faith of a nation. A boy from Brooklyn became a bishop in China. Bishop Ford was a very excellent man. Sister Paulita Hoffman is one of the last people alive who worked side by side with the man the world may someday call a saint. At 103 years old, cataracts blur her vision, but her memories are as clear as China was red. All our work was with the local people in parishes. It was the young priest mission arriving in China in 1918. A newly ordained priest, Father Francis Ford sought not only to build structures, but personal relationships. He insisted on traveling to the peripheries, to the rice fields and mountains, to create a Chinese church. Back in the 1920s, uh, early 1930s, uh, religious that went to China as missionaries set up a compound and the people had to come to them. So Bishop Ford reversed that and said, we will go to the people. From this method, Father Francis was named a bishop, the first of Kaiying, in charge of shepherding a diocese of 19 Chinese priests, 26 Chinese sisters, and 23,000 believers. He was using men to be priests and uh, brothers rather than army men, soldiers. His diocese flourished, but China fell to the march of jackboots. Communists seizing power did not see his flock as humble believers. Instead, they were accused of being agents of American imperialism. He had been through a lot already in China. China had been through a lot. So one more gang of warlords to all intents and purposes was nothing, nothing special, really. I mean, they'd gone through the Japanese War. What could be worse than that? Red officials began closing churches and taking Catholics prisoner. Still, the bishop carried on until he, too, was sentenced to indefinite imprisonment. Tomorrow, how the legacy of Bishop Ford lives on today. Michelle Powers, Currents News.